So after after he got, after he had lost and he was announcing his retirement, is that why his team bailed on him? I read that somewhere. Yeah, I don't know why they bailed on they him. They were mad I mean, that, I he, that, that he that. grappled and he didn't stick to the game plan. Really, really. Well, that's interesting. I mean, no, I can't see that. I mean, I don't know. I mean, as I said, we were in a restaurant and it was kind of hard watching it on an iPhone, uh, and we were talking about what was happening. Um, I can't imagine his team would abandon him in the octagon for doing that. You know, and if they did, shame on shame on them. You know, because things happen in a fight. You know, you can't go out there. Yes, well, it's like Mike Tyson famously said. You know, everybody has a game plan until you get punched in the face. Sometimes, once the fight happens, you're on autopilot, and 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 it's the really good fighters that can stick to the game plan on autopilot. And then other times, you just reacting to what's happening to you. You know, so it, I, I would assume his coaches, his teammates know him. You, you get a bond, you, you become like brothers. I can't imagine just because he didn't stick to a game plan, they abandoned him and left him in the octagon. Mm, I I'm don't. Re- I'm reading this right now. Look, uh, Rumble's Corner tried in vain to tell their fighter to stop trying to out wrestle an Olympic wrestler, but after after a shocking first round in Buffalo, uh, Cormier's world renowned wrestling skills were far too good for Johnson, blah, blah, blah. Um, Johnson striking coach Henry Hooft had built his fighter's game up on incredible knockout power. Audio Johnson's corner shows just how shocked Hooft and his team were by Johnson's strategy. Uh, they urged him to stop and keep his distance, but Johnson remained silent as they tried in vain to get him to stop. Uh, this is, yeah, this is somebody else's voice. Take your time. Nice, take your time. This is Hooft. Don't wrestle him. Um, yeah, you don't have to wrestle him. AJ, just relax. Don't wrestle him. Everyone's telling him, don't wrestle him. Don't wrestle him. Wow, dude, I'm going to send you this. This is crazy. And yeah, yeah don't they- wrestle is the key words there. Where are you reading this? I'm going to send you the link right now on Facebook. It's on metro.co.uk. This is uh, from audio. Yeah, this is a real deal. This isn't like bullshit. They left him because he abandoned the game plan and then retired. Whoa. What? Well, man. I mean, I'm shot. Listen, of course, you can be angry at your fighter. Yeah, I just got the link. Thank you. You can be angry at your fighter. You can be frustrated, all these things. But there are conversations that you have in the locker room afterwards. Or you go out to dinner afterwards and, and you be realistic and they say, you know, I mean, I've had losses and, and I've, I've I had to sit down to my coaches and say, you know, what do you think? I never said, listen, you know, that sucked. That was bad. You did this wrong. You did that wrong. You shouldn't have done this. You did this good, but let's not sugarcoat it. You shouldn't have done that, this and the other. For his coaches to abandon him in the octagon, if that's what they did, and I know you've just sent me the article, but we are doing a podcast. I'll read it later. Um, if that's what they did, then I'm just going to throw it out there right now. Shame on them. You know, maybe, um, you know, they might not talk to me anymore. They might not train with me. Well, I don't fucking train with Henry Hooft anyway. If that's what they did, if they couldn't stick by their fighter after he's just gone out there to battle, then shame on fucking them. You know, they're just after the glory. They don't give a fuck about Anthony Johnson. If, they, if, if that's what they did, because he wrestled, they, they didn't even stand with their fighter and walk him out and help him walk out of the octagon and, and make him feel better. It takes balls to go out there and fight. And whether you stick to a game plan or not, you should still get the respect of everybody involved, you know. Yeah. Um, so if, if that's the case, then I'm, I'm disgusted with his team, to be honest. Yeah, that's uh, it's very it's very strange. The whole thing, the whole night, both the main and co-main, there are these weird things that have happened in both of these fights. Um, and what is going on? Why with is he Johnson? resting him? This is stupid. Why mm. is he? Fuck it, man. Just get off the cage. Get out of there. Why isn't he listening? He's tired already. I don't know why he's doing that. We have no expletive eyes. He has no fucking eyes. You're doing great. Don't fuck up. Don't wrestle him. Oh, man. Yeah, just keep going on and on and on and on and on. Why the fuck does this happen every fucking time? Crazy. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I but 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 hold on. It doesn't say there that that was the reason that they left. I mean, that is a, a, a normal dialogue that cornermen will have to themselves. If their fighter is out there and they're losing and they're doing things that they shouldn't have done, you're entitled to have an opinion. So maybe if that isn't the reason why they walked off, then I apologize to his team for what I said. If they walked out there because he lost and didn't stick to the game plan, then yeah, I stand by my words. But they're... As cornermen, you're allowed to have a dialogue to each other and say, Jesus, he's doing it again. He's doing it again. The whole training camp, we told him not to do this. I guarantee the entire training camp, Rumble was not supposed to wrestle. You know, so of course they're going to be frustrated. But if they didn't have the, if they weren't man enough to stand there side by side with him, 
in victory or defeat, you're supposed to support your fighter. Simple as that. Yeah, I, I kind of find it weird in general that they have microphones in the corner during, like, in between rounds. I almost feel like that's kind of an invasion of privacy. Like, the way that a coach and a, and a, and a guy talk, isn't that kind of like... Wouldn't another team be able to kind of go and, like, look at that tape and be able to kind of, like, take that in? And I don't know. I, I almost feel like... I, I almost feel you don't really need to have that aspect. As a fan, it's kind of cool to, like, listen to what's happening in between rounds. But I almost feel like it's a little intimate, no? Yeah, but well, that's exactly what it's for. It's for the viewer. It's for the TV experience so that the viewer at home can hear what's happening in the corner. Um, I guess a way around that would just be to stick a microphone on a boom over the top of the corner. That would make things a lot easier. Uh, but no, I, I don't think that's an invasion of privacy. You know, it, it's all part of it. And, uh, you know, that, that, that's just the name of the game, Lewis. So, uh, all good. Why did Anthony Johnson retire? What is going on? What is this mystery job that he had? Uh, why did Anthony Rumble Johnson retire? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, he said he got another job. Have you heard anything behind yeah, the scenes? Yeah, no, no, I haven't heard anything. I haven't heard any whispers, any rumors. I don't have a relationship with Rumble Johnson other than being a big fan and meeting him once or twice and shaking his hand and saying, you know, hey, how you doing? Um, I'm assuming he's got something um, lucrative in the pipeline. Dana referenced something last night that, you know, Rumble said something like that. But at the end of the day, and my son said to me last night, Callum, he said, why did Rumble retire? That doesn't make sense. And I argued with him. I said, well, it kind of does make sense. You know, I mean, everybody wants to be the world champion. And this is a very, very tough, unforgiving sport. People don't realize the fight is the easy part. The training and the lifestyle is the hard part. You know, I mean, I've said this a million times. You know, when you fight, you go out there, you get the, the applause of the crowd, or, or in my case, the boos, if I'm in America. Uh, you get the applause. Or Australia. You get the, vic you, you get the victory. You get, you get the thrill of victory. You get the thrill of competing. You're competing in the sport that you've chosen in front of the world, on TV all over the place, in front of 20,000 people. At the end of it, you get a big fat check, you know, and, and it's great. It's awesome. You are a professional sportsman competing at the highest level, and that's great. On a random Tuesday morning when it's freezing cold outside and you go to the gym and your body's aching from head to toe and you're getting the shit kicked out of you, there's no applause, there's no crowd, there's no check. But you've got to do it time and after time and time again. You've got to keep repeating that process. And that's where champions are made in the training camp. That's what separates the men from the boys. And Anthony Johnson has had a fantastic career. And of course, he could stick around the UFC for a lot longer and continue fighting and continue beating people and knocking people out and putting on great performances. But he wants to be the champion. And he's failed at that twice. He lost to Cormier and he lost to him again. And part of me respects that, respects the fact that he's willing to walk away, he respects the fact that he says, well, you know what, if I'm not going to be the best, if I'm not going to be the champion, then screw it. I tried, I put my heart and soul into it, and I couldn't do it. I respect a little piece of that, and he's smart enough to walk away while he's still got his brain cells, while he's still got, you know, not too many injuries, and he's still young enough to pursue another career. So if that's the case and that's his choice, I say, well done. Thank you for the knockouts and best of luck in your future life. Wow, classy Michael Bisping. Well, what's, well, what do you want me to do? You can't give a guy shit for retiring. You surprise me sometimes. I don't know. Every once in a while, you surprise me. What am I going to say? <laughs> well, um, thank you very much. <laughs>